The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! <laughs> you think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? <laughs> well, I must have not been paying attention. When you were just talking to me Completely disorganized as always Let's get the show up Facebook's very slow today. It sure is. I think Zuckerberg's got some problems. Couldn't happen to a better guy. <laughs> All right, we're up. We're good. All right, let's get this show on the road. What do you think? Oh, all right. Bye-bye today. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. <coughs> Coughing right out of the gate. Hi, you top two guys smoke shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Uh, we've got a couple of guests here. We're waiting on Joyce Campignon. If she shows up, you never know with Joyce. She could be out making beans for some bean supper somewhere. You don't know where she's going to be. Uh, but we do have a couple of guests here we're going to get to in a minute. Before we do, though, I want to do a bash update because we didn't do one last week. Um, we've raised, in the last week, we've raised almost $2,000 for our scholarships. Wow. Which is okay, but we're, we're not near where we need to be. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I know that everybody does everything last minute. Everybody in the world does everything last minute. It's like the new pro-COVID thing, right? If I tell a columnist, I need your column by Tuesday at 1 o'clock. You know when they start working on it? Tuesday at 1 o'clock. That's when they start working okay. on it. So um, we know that everybody does everything last minute. So we're hoping that, like most years, the majority of the money for these scholarships are going to come in as we get closer to uh, the event. But we did want to put up a bash total screen, uh, which is right there. So for our junior, high, junior ROTC Lawrence High, and there's a typo in there. I don't know why. Um, maybe because I did this at 4 in the morning. <laughs> uh, for the Lawrence High School Junior ROTC Scholarship, we have $0 donated, right? Oh. So, And part of that is because we usually have Eugene Smith gives us the first 1400 for seed money. Then other people start matching it. He's a uh, Korean War veteran, and he's, he's not doing well. His, his um, oh. health is not good. And so I was not going to go to him and ask him for money while he was sick. So we're looking for somebody that, that can at least fill in Eugene's spot this year. And maybe kick in like $1,000 to get this thing going. Because once they do, once I post on Facebook, so-and-so donated to such and such a scholarship, people see it, and they'll call me and say, hey, I want to kick in for that too. So I um, want to reach out. Anybody that I graduated from Lawrence High, if you graduated from Lawrence High, please think about throwing a scholarship donation to um, our junior ROTC kid. The Greater Lawrence Tech. <coughs> this was at $0 two weeks ago. We are now at $1,200. Thanks to that magnificent bastard, the man that I lovingly call the midget, Mike Gagliardi. And uh, he is the president of Laborers Union Local 175. Our politics are exactly opposite. Mm-hmm. We, we agree on literally nothing, and, we, and yet we're still best friends. And that should be something that the younger generation should maybe pay attention to, because you don't have to agree with someone to be their friend. The Whittier Tech Scholarship, thanks to Alvalo, we were at $1,900. The Michelle the Luca Benedetti Scholarship, which goes to a Haverhill High School kid that's graduating, going into either social work or public safety, mm-hmm. criminal justice, that's at one thousand seven hundred and thirty-five dollars. The Dan Cody Memorial Scholarship, we've got a, an announcement on this in a couple of seconds that people oh. are really going to like. Uh, we're at one thousand dollars, and I have a feeling that's going to jump significantly. Did, it's, uh, all, it's like Halloween in here. Oh. All right. um, <laughs> And the Methuen High School Studio 21 Podcast Cafe Scholarship, we have tasked Jana Di Natale, my spirit animal. Yeah. She's going to find us a kid. I got a call from a few people in Methuen saying, we'll help you find a kid that never heard back from them. Oh. So I finally said, you know what? We can't wait anymore. I'm going to go to my go- one of my go-to people. And I called Jana and said, we need somebody for the scholarship. 
Uh, and that's at 21. So our total for the scholarships for the Valley Patriot Bash, which is April 8th, we'd like everyone to come. Veterans are free. Hopefully you guys can come. Veterans are free. Uh, our total is 7935 We're shooting for, our goal is 5000 per kid. And I think we can get there because, I mean, we got five weeks to go and we've already got, you know, almost $1,000 yeah. or more than 1000 for each kid except for the Lawrence High Junior ROTC. If you graduated from Lawrence High, please give, right? If you, if you work at Lawrence High School, please give. And by the way, you're writing your check not to me and not to the Valley Patriot Bash. For the Lawrence High Scholarship, you write it to the Lawrence High Alumni Association, and they make sure that the money goes directly to the school the kid's going to. So the kid never even touches the money. We don't touch the money on the Lawrence High Scholarship. It goes directly to the school. And by the way, it's tax deductible. For all of you people who don't want to give a donation to anybody because you're cheap bastards, unless there's a tax write-off in it for you because you only care about you, that's fine. Give to the, the Lawrence High Junior ROTC scholarship for our bash this year, and you can get a tax write-off for yourself because, you know, most people, that's all they really care about. Uh, I do want to announce who, uh, who is going to be appearing at this event. Um, okay, you, you, you're with the scholarships? All right, we'll do that first. Mm-hmm. We'll do that first. Uh, before I do that, where are we? Okay, here we are. So uh, I want to thank some of the people who donated. Um, the guy you're seeing up on your screen right now, Al Velo, um, he started the Whittier Tech Scholarship because that's where he went. And he also uh, started the Dan Cody Memorial Scholarship because Dan Cody was killed the week before our bash that year. I think Uh it was about six years ago. So he came to my office with an additional check and said, I want to start a Dan Cody Memorial Scholarship. I know you've only got a week. Do you think you can find a kid that went to Thompson Grammar School in North Andover because that's where Dan's kids are going? And I was like, well, that's kind of weird. We're giving it to somebody that went to a specific Mm -hmm. grammar school. He said, no, no, no. You have to understand my thinking here. What is that? That's their phone. It's Joycey. Candy's phone. It's Joyce trying to call you. <sighs> um, <laughs> what was it? I so he, he, said, he said, follow my thinking here. He said, I'm, I want to give this scholarship. Hopefully this will go every year. We're going to give it to a kid that graduated from the Thompson Grammar School in North Andover, no matter what high school they go to, hoping that the scholarship will still be around six or seven years ago when Dan Cody's son, who's going there now, graduates from high school. So I thought, that's great, because then when the kid gets a little older, we can yeah. give the scholarship that's in his father's name that we give to other people every year, and we can give it to him. That's so awesome. I want to thank Al Velo for doing both of those things. Who do we have next? We have Dave. We Dave. Big Dave Garafalo came to me right after the show when we announced we were having a bash and said, here's $2,100 from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. We're going to give it to any kid that wants to go into communications or uh, communications or broadcasting. And since we don't have Methuen High School on our list, I said, let's also make sure it's a Methuen High School kid. Yeah. And maybe, maybe all those cheap politicians that want you to give them your money at election time, maybe some of those politicians will actually kick in and help out a, uh, uh, a Methuen High School kid. Uh, next slide. Here we go. There's, there he is, that magnificent bastard. Isn't he unbelievable? I have never in my life picked up the phone and called Mike Gagliotti from Laborers Union Local 175 and asked him for something and had him say no. Not once, not oh. ever. In fact, I called him this morning and said, I'm having a hard time getting through to a certain elected official. I'm trying to get this concept into her effing head, because I was really mad. I said, and I know she listens to you. Can you please talk to her? And he said, Tommy, I promise you by tomorrow that will be taken care of. Like, not even, I'm not sure, you get back to me, I don't know, I don't want to ruin my relationship with her. It was like, Tom, It'll be done by tomorrow. So I've never asked him for anything and had him say no, and that's awesome. Um, okay, the next one. This is, this is a photo of Dan Cody. He's the guy, he's the gentleman that got killed. The memorial scholarship is in his name. That is his cousin, Nicole. She's on our bash committee. And next slide. Oh, Here. Cody. And now we've, got this, now we've got the big announcement. This year, Dan Cody's son graduates from high school. So we are going to have the Cody family there, and we are going to give the Dan Cody Memorial Scholarship to his son, Patrick, who is graduating this year. And if that's not enough to get people who are watching this or following me on Facebook to kick in a couple of dollars to help this kid get to college after his father was tragically killed Mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, I believe he was on 495. Was it 93. Uh, he was killed on 93 by a drunk driver. Actually, there was a dispute as to whether she was drunk, but the initial, initial reports was she's a drunk driver. Um, and I think that's going to be kind of a nice thing to have the Cody family there. That's I got nice. a call from the Cody family 
the year that we started this scholarship, and they were very upset with me. And they said, you're having this scholarship in the name of Dan, and you didn't call any of us. You didn't ask any of us to coordinate or to donate. And I said, that's because I didn't want you guys to have to do any of that. You just lost Dan, right? And, and you guys need, have things you need to do. Let us take care of that. Let us ask the community for, for, the, for the donations. And they said, yeah, but we're worried that, like, what if nobody donates? It's kind of kind of looked bad for, for Dan and Dan's memory. And I said, don't you worry about it. I'll make sure that there's enough. And I think the first year we gave out $2,000. I think the last batch that we had before COVID, we gave five. Uh-huh. So um, hopefully the whole Cody family will be able to come. That would be a really nice thing, a really nice uh, uh, dedication to Dan Cody. And here's the last one. So I, and I really apologize. I don't have their names in front of me. But these are the two girls from the Great Lawrence Vocational School, tech school, who are getting our scholarship for the Great Lawrence Voc Scholarship, um, that, that Mike Gagliotti just kicked in $1,000. While I'm on the phone with him asking for him for something, he said, what do you need for your bash? I said, we have nothing for the Voc, and we have nothing for Lawrence High. He goes, okay, I'm in for $1,000 for the Voc. Awesome. So we're going to have him come up with Jessica, and that's going to be fun because I, I don't think they like each other. So, <laughs> so we're going to have him and Jessica come up, and we're going to have them do the presentation because the bash is a, the bash is a night – of amnesty, yes. where people can get up and roast me, and we don't hold anything against you after the event is over. People who don't like each other are sitting at each other's tables. Um, a couple of years, we had uh, politicians that really, really hated me. Dan Rivera got up once, and we weren't even sp- we were literally not even speaking. And I saw him the morning before the bash and said, "Are you still coming tomorrow?" And he said, "No." And then he showed up and he said, "I want a microphone." And then he roasted me for twenty minutes and told <laughs> everybody what a piece of shit I am. <laughs> And, th- and that was funny. Like, people walked out talking about that, and it created a buzz for the next year. So um, that is our bash update. We have uh, – oh, and we have uh, – who's appearing? All right, so here's yeah. we have who's appearing. <coughs> Gentlemen on the left, that's DJ Rick Belanti from Bel Air Music. He is a professional DJ. By the way, if anybody needs a DJ, please give him a call. Find him on Facebook. Every year, he does this bash, and instead of charging us a couple thousand dollars to do this event – he does it for free. And so we want to thank Rick Belanti. Our MC this year. Now, our first MC was Poppy Girl Kate Whitney. Mm-hmm. And after she couldn't do it anymore after five years, we were really worried because we'll, I said, we're never going to find anybody as beautiful as Kate. We're, not, we're never going to get anybody as, as hot as Poppy Girl into this event. And look who we found. And then we found Tony Wakester. And I, I hate to say it because I love Kate, but she was actually hotter than Kate. And everybody walked into that room and went, oh, my God, who was that? Like, she was like a star was in the room. Nobody cared that I was there. They were all looking at her going, oh, my God, look at that. So then Tony couldn't do it. She did it two, for two years. And then we get my sister, Kiana, who's a perfect 10. Every guy in the place was asking me for a phone number, which was great because it gets all the firefighters and the veterans to keep buying drinks, right, and <laughs> stay in the room. This, so I, 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 Kiana can't be there at the beginning of the night this year. Um, she, she does ministry and she's got some ministry things she's got to do, but she's coming later. So we had to find an MC and I was thinking, who do we know that's a perfect 10? Like, who do we know that's as hot as puppy girl, Kiana and Tony Wakester? And it only took about five seconds for the little voice in the back of my head went, it's Jaina, it's Jaina. So I called Jaina, Jaina Zani Pesci on the Methuen School Committee and said, You've got to do this. You've got to be our MC. I mean, this, this fits in perfect with us. And before I even finished asking, she said yes. So we've got Jaina Zani Pesci is going to be our MC this yes. year. I can't, I can't wait to see what she's wearing. It's going to be awesome. Just that alone, I don't care if anybody else comes. It's just going to be a bash just with me and Jana. I'd be happy. Um, and uh, we, in the bottom right-hand corner, that's Eric Spagnoli, famous comedian. He's going to be there to do some comedy in between – us doing scholarships and awards. I will say one more thing. We don't just do scholarships at this event. We give out money to local nonprofits if they're in the room. If you're in the room and we made a lot more money on the raffles than we thought we were going to, we'll write an extra check. We'll find somebody who's involved in a nonprofit that does good work. Mm -hmm. If you're in the room, you may walk out with a check. If you're not in the room, for example, there was one person that we asked to come four or five years ago. They came, they stayed 20 minutes, and they left, and we had a check for them for $1,000. And when we announced their name, they weren't in the room. We ripped up the check and wrote a check for somebody else. So you've got to come, and you've got to stay. This is not like ADD, right? This is a full night event. And there's a yeah. bar, and there's free food. By the way, uh, we want to thank Mike Agricola from uh, Salvatore's, 
who does the food for free every year. So we get the food for free, we get the DJ for free, we get the entertainment for free. We, we have almost no costs, which means when you give a donation, 100% of your donation is going to go where it's supposed to go. I think we got everything. Do we have everything? Or is there one Mel. more slide? Yeah. Oh, and we have Melvin Taylor is going to open the show. How could I forget Mel? He opens this show. He wrote, the, he wrote the theme song for this show that you listened coming in, and he starts the bash every year with the Paying Attention song. Yeah. So he will be coming to do that, which is awesome. Is. And uh, I wish we could go to his event on the 25th, but on the 25th, we're having our comedy night here. Mm-hmm. And we were going to charge to come in, but we're not going to do that because we want people oh. to be here to laugh for the comedians, for those watching at home, right? So we're not going to charge, but we're going to ask people to make a donation if they come. We're going to put a Venmo or a PayPal or a Square number at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Each comedian is going to do their set for a specific scholarship. So Spags might get up and say, I want to do the Junior ROTC scholarship. We'll have a separate Venmo number for you. And that will, even after we go off live, that'll still be online. People will happen upon it as they're surfing the internet. All right. I did a whole show, what, in 10 minutes? That's amazing. A whole whole bash update in 10 minutes. All All right. So we're still waiting on Joyce Campignon if she's coming. Again, they might, she might have saw a, a sign for a spaghetti dinner on the way up here, and she probably stopped. <laughs> but sitting with me is from the Methuen VFW, people who don't get enough donations, people who don't get enough credit for what they do for our hero veterans, Dave O'Neill and Corinne Yates. And I'm sorry, I didn't get, Dave, your title. Are you like the, you're the, Is that like the, he, the Grand Poobah? No, no, that's the commander. Okay, I, I all right. I take care of the money. Oh, okay. Money, All right. money in the building. Quartermaster. All right. And Corinne, do you have like a? Are you, do you have a title? Are you like yes, the? Yes, I'm the uh, president of the auxiliary. Okay, president of the auxiliary. And uh, Joyce called me and asked me if you guys could come on the show to talk about some of the great things that you guys are doing yep. mm-hmm. for veterans. And I thought this is the this is the place to be. I mean, we do everything we can to to promote veterans here on the show. So yep. why don't you talk about a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, maybe your service a little bit, and then you know what it is that uh, the VFW is doing these yep. days. Okay. Uh, one, a uh, Marine Corps veteran. I served '67 to uh, '70 with a tour in Vietnam. I got out, uh, went back into the CBs for three years, and then I got out, went to art school, became a package designer. And then 18 years later, I went back in the Marine Corps Reserve. 18 years later? 18 years wow. later. I, uh, my unit in Lawrence got called up for uh, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And uh, I was the supply chief. I got left behind. So I went on additional duty for training. And uh, during the, th- the uh, month and a half I was gone, I lost my business. Uh, so uh, sorry to hear I was that. basically a package designer, graphic designer. I've been a member of the VFW since 1971. I started the, uh, at the PBD Post, uh, went to uh, Derry, and then uh, ended up here in Methuen in 85. I've been there uh, ever since. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while you were talking about the, the scholarship programs here, uh, once a year we run uh, scholarship uh, contests uh, for the uh, lower grade and the upper grade. It's uh, Patriot Pen and the Voice of Democracy. And this year, our post uh, had a young lady, Emma Cotnor, from the St. Monica's School, uh, finished first out of the entire state of Massachusetts. Wow. She got just under 1000 in uh, scholarship funding, and she's going on to uh, national to compete against the rest of the uh, states. Nice. In, uh, now, was Dan Cotnor her father? Uncle. 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 Okay, good. And, Keep uh, it in the family. I love it. Yeah. Well, we didn't know it was her when we did it because when we judge, we have no idea who it is. That's but, awesome. Well, she won. She's a very personable young lady. Uh, we presented the school with the plaque uh, a week ago. Uh, and uh, I guess they're going to be going, because of COVID uh, changes, uh, to D.C. and or Kansas in June or July. And uh if she wins on national, uh, she'll be getting $5,000. Nice. Voice of Democracy is a little bit more. It's for the upper grades, and it's not written. It's all verbal, and uh, they get judged on, uh, you know, presence of, uh, you know, voice mm-hmm. and, and the content of the contest, which changes every year. And uh, their scholarship money can go upwards of, I believe it's $30,000. Nice. So we've had... I dream for a day we can give a thirty thousand dollars yeah. scholarship right. out. Yeah. Well, we've had problems in the past, and uh, you know I'm stepping on toes. I could care less. Uh, with I, you the, know what? I like that the Methuen school system. 
uh, we've had an awful hard time getting in the schools over the past five years to get con the students to enter this contest. Last year we had uh, five in each group. Uh, the year before that, I believe we had two. The year before that, we had to take a students from other districts other than Methuen uh, to enter it. Uh, hopefully, if any of them are listen this, uh, listening this year, it's going to change, and we start getting our applications out in September, and uh, these kids uh, can earn some, some nice uh, change to help them in college, uh, and it looks nice on a resume. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, come this September, when we're out uh, visiting the schools, they'll let us in, and they'll post it up there so that we get more students to participate. Right. So that was the, the scholarship. Maybe you that. guys should talk to Jane and Zanny Pesci from the yeah. Methuen School Committee about that because I hear complaints all the time about the Methuen schools. They're so anti-police, anti-veteran. Yeah. They're so politically correct. And, and it's actually more the administrators than the teachers. It's yeah. the running the show right. that way. Yeah. Um, and so maybe we can, at the very least, shame them into, into working with you. Yeah. It's that, changed, a my, little, changed a little bit this okay. year, but not enough to suit me. So. Right. Okay. Very Well, listen, then. That's, uh, you, you came to the right place for that. Yeah. And this, I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of shaming people and getting them to do the right thing. This year we have uh, uh, our adjutant, Ed Dion, has uh, started an, uh, an essay contest for the ROTC at the high school. Uh, and we're going to be presenting uh, scholarship uh, funding for that, I believe. Uh, it starts, depending on how you finish, anywhere from two fifty, maybe fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Nice. And that's going to be uh, probably awarded sometime in April and/or May, and it will go directly to the school of whoever wins. Can you guys reach out to me when you're about to do these things, yeah. so that we can promote it in the Valley Patriot? Because yeah. these are these are things people need to know about, and they may, may they may not just know, right? Yeah. And you might be able to get a parent who reads the paper. Yeah who the schools wouldn't tell, right, because yeah. the schools aren't cooperating. Mm -hmm. So we might be able to maybe use the vehicle of the Valley Patriot and this show and our yeah. social media to maybe try and help you guys out. Yeah, we'd like to have a lot of, a lot of uh, entries. Uh, we basically give our finances uh, uh, first, second, and third place. Uh, each get a medal, and they get uh, a check. Nice. And, and then fourth on down, we'll get uh, honorable mention and a certificate just for, for coming in, but it's, it, it's worth – worth their while, mm -hmm. and you, you get to see the mindset of the young kids as far as uh, citizenship or uh, uh, what I think of the, my country, the military, my flag, or, or something, you know? Mm -hmm. It gets sure. them involved in that, sure. you know, rather than video games. Right. Yeah. Kareen, you're um, in charge of the auxiliary. Yes. Can you talk about what is that? It, it's a support for all the veterans. We do a lot of uh, fundraisers. We, do, we support the Eagle Scouts. We do uh, Bessie Hanskin scholarships, which helps the veterans' kids. We support the VA hospital. Uh, we do cancer insurance as far as like, uh, the auxiliary in that. We, do, we donate clothes and person, personal things to the Chelsea Hospital. The VA National Home, so we support troops. We, we've, uh, we've done... Uh, tunnels to Towers, uh, um, we, we've supported um, service dogs, military assistance, Operation Uplink, um, the National Veterans Services reach across America. We've, we also uh, do donate to the Patriotic Pen. We give prize money to and the Voice of Democracy. And um, Boy Scout, when we, we do uh, the Veterans Outreach in Haver, we, we donate to them monetarily uh, twice a year. And we do a lot of community services also. Uh, we had one uh, girl who raised over $3,000 for the children's. Uh, she did a bike ride, bicycle ride, and she raised $3,000 for the ch children's cancer uh, research. Nice. And, um, and among other things. Mm -hmm. So how does somebody become a member of the VFW? Obviously, you have to be a veteran, and you have to have served in a foreign war, because that's what VFW means, right? Veterans of foreign war, right? Right. Um, what, if someone is a veteran of a foreign war and they want to join, what's the benefit of joining? Like, what, what do they get? Uh, basically, a support system that's getting better every day, uh, uh, camaraderie. Uh, basically, the post is not a, uh, a drunk tank, which a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's good for overpouring cheap drinks and everything else. It's a lot more uh, than that. And we're starting, this post is starting to get back into that. But, uh, uh, We've been running dances uh, at the post. It helps raise money for the post, but it brings the community together. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a Valentine's Day party. Yeah. 
uh, dinner dance that went over well. We're doing a St. Patrick's Day uh, dinner dance on Sunday, uh, March 13th. And are these things that anybody can come to or just veterans? Anybody can come to. Good. Uh, normally, the dinner dances are free to veterans and the guests pay. As uh, it should be. It, at the St. Pat Patrick's Day uh, party we're having, uh, because of the dinner and the amount, uh, the veterans are going to be $10 a head. The guests are 20 okay. and if you come to the door, it'll be 25 then. So uh, we've posted it on social media. We put flyers up around. Uh, I need to get a, you know, a total head count by Monday to call into the caterer. We're not cooking this year. We're going to have everything catered. Okay. Uh, and we have uh, uh, Joe and uh, Linda are going to be doing the, uh, uh, the entertainment for music. At the Valentine's Day uh, party, we wheeled in our uh, jukebox, and the jukebox was the entertainment, so it was like a big record hop <laughs> right. down there. Bunch of old people up there shaking their booties, which was, uh, was fun. Thank, thanks for that mental image. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's, that's going to stick with me later well, tonight. Well, <laughs> well, they wouldn't let me play the chicken dances. You touch that right. button, we're going to break your fingers. That's hilarious. Now, I have a charity bash that I do every year, and veterans are free. Because we honor veterans mm -hmm. in the room. We give out a couple of awards to hero veterans that not only served, but they came back and helped their community. Randy, by the way, Randy mm -hmm. Carter, who's here today, is, is one of our recipients. So is Jerry Maguire, who I understand mm -hmm. uh, comes to your post. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love for you to let your members know mm -hmm. that this is a free dinner for them. Uh, Salvatore's uh, Restaurant in Lawrence is catering it. It's free. All they have to do is come in and say that they're a veteran. We're not going to make them prove it because if you're not a veteran yep. and you say you're a veteran, there's a veteran in the room who will know yep. you're not a veteran and they'll kick your ass. And oh, yeah. We've had it one time. Yep. One time somebody tried to come in saying they were a veteran and there was a veteran sitting next to him and he said, you're not a veteran. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. And we threw him out. Uh, but we'd love for you to let your membership know because yeah. we'd love for them to come and just enjoy the night. It's, yeah. no, it's free for them. Yeah, get the information to us. We'll post it on our bulletin board. Absolutely. And uh, as far as joining... Uh, you do have to be a, uh, an honorably discharged veteran or active duty veteran that has served in a war zone and earned the campaign or service ribbon for that given war. Okay. Uh, that's not me. That's set by national. Okay. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. If you didn't get it, you're not coming in. If we find you and you did sneak in, we'll kindly ask you to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it in a nutshell. We do it not so kindly. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm kind <laughs> as I can be. We put Randy in charge of that, and he's yeah. not very kind at all yeah. about those kind of things. So, and then it's it's uh, thirty-two dollars a year for a continuous member. Oh, that's that's excellent. Or that's want, cheap. If you wanted to be a life member, right now they offer a twelve-month paid uh, program, and at the end of twelve months, you get your life membership card. It comes with a uh, insurance policy. It's not large, but it's it's some money just in case. Uh, and like I said, we're growing. We need to get a lot more of the younger veterans in, male and female, mm -hmm. uh, because the women are serving now, too. Right. Uh, well, you we, guys want as many women as you can. Yeah. Because at a place like the VFW, the more women you have in the room, the more guys are going to show up. Yeah. That's just, <laughs> we, we, we learned that at our first bash when we had Kate yeah. Whitney be our MC. Five tables of firefighters called me and said, is that puppy girl going to be your MC? And I'm like, yeah, okay, we want five tables. So, I mean, it, people, we laugh mm -hmm. about it, but it actually does work. So Yeah. And we do have one... Uh, a uh, female uh, member as an office holder uh, that was active duty Korea. So, uh, you know, we'd like to get more in. Uh, we're planning on starting up membership drives where we have coffee days where someone can come in. We can outreach someone. It's hard to get out into the public and do it. People don't travel around with the DD-214s. Right, right. And we need to see that DD-214 right. uh, in order for you to uh, uh, be voted on and, and, and brought in. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, if you don't know what a DD-214 is, you're not getting in, right? <laughs> now, can you be an honorary member? Is there a way somebody who's a veteran that wants to join and help but isn't a veteran that could maybe be like it? Like, I'm on the, on the board of um, the uh, veterans assisting veterans, but I'm not a veteran, so yep. they may be an honorary member. So I don't vote, but yep. I can still come and I can still yep. partake and input. You can, one, you can join the auxiliary. Right. Oh, the auxiliaries, right. You're right yes. here. If you have a family member... Uh, uh, grandfather, grandmother, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, uh, son, daughter, that could be a VFW member, you can join the auxiliary. Uh, we also have uh, a patriotic uh, club membership, which you can, rather than having the door unlocked for you when we have, uh, uh, say, a public event going on, you can basically just come right to the door. We have that. Mm -hmm, nice. Uh, you can't vote. You can't do anything other than come down and support us. Right. 
Uh, but you guys need that. You need non-veterans coming to help you because... Well, that's you know, the that's way the it is now across the country because depending on what part of the country you come from, uh, veterans are not joining the VFW anymore. Yep. The younger kids that are getting out now, and I call them kids, but they're, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't drink. Uh, they don't smoke. Uh, probably don't do drugs unless you know, we have some with the serious problems. Uh, so what else we have to offer? Right. You know? Right. Women. You get a lot of women to join, and those young kids will be right there. I'm telling yeah, you. Probably, you know, plus they want to have... Maybe we can lend you my sister. Maybe my sister can come <laughs> hang well, out they, for They want to have cigar night and everything else. And I said, we, we can't open for smoking, period. With yeah, I, with I have a hard time with that. Can I tell you why? I mean, I'm a non-veteran, so my, yeah. my opinion doesn't count. But I feel like someone who went off and fought for their country and put their life on the line, mm -hmm. especially if they're an older gentleman, like Korea, or, or mm -hmm. maybe World War II, I mean... They should be able to smoke wherever the hell they want. And True, but it's I mean, it's if you, all even if you guys had a little smoking room or something they could go some to? Some posts do. Okay. We don't. We don't have the room for it. Okay. Uh, maybe in the future, it could change. And it all, it As all, a smoker, I feel bad for veterans that smoke. And then Jim Ferentini made a, yeah. a, a law maybe five or six years mm -hmm. ago saying that even the veteran clubs couldn't smoke. And they wanted to smoke. And he wouldn't let them. And I'm like, look, these people have bombs falling on them. And you're going to yep. say, no, they can't come back and smoke? Or yeah. guys with no legs? Yep. You tell them they can't smoke? Yeah. And it's one thing, I think, if the lodge is doing it, if the veterans themselves say yeah. that's, that's what we want. But when the, when the cities do it and the, and the, and yeah. the government does it, it really rubs yeah. against me the wrong way. Well, veterans voted to go non-smoking. Okay. The Post right. did. Uh, and hopefully we're going to stay that way. We've been in that Post 60 years now smoking. You can imagine the nicotine we've had to wash off the walls down there. And change the but it adds, it adds character, though. Yeah, right. And change the ceiling tile. So we said it's about time we gave somebody 60 years of non-smoking. Right. And that people were upset, but it's we've had a lot more people come in mm -hmm. for functions. Uh, we have some complainers. Almost once once or twice a week, somebody will stop moaning, groaning. I'll tell them, you don't like it, pack up, head out, go find someplace else. Right. You want a cigarette, go outside. Right. That, that's the way it is. You, you can't go to any place else and smoke. Like you know, years ago, you could go yeah, you to can't the, smoke anywhere. You could go to Hilltop yeah. and have a dinner and be smoking while you're eating. You, right. you don't do that anymore. I remember going to Showcase Cinema when I was a kid, yeah. and, and, and I, I actually asked the guy in front of me if maybe he could just move over because like, he's smoking a cigar. And I'm like, I literally can't see the screen. The smoke is so thick. And the whole place was just, just I mean, it was, it was just, it was like a Spicoli on... Uh, on uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, like you yeah. open the door and it was just a cloud of smoke coming out at you. Yeah, but the members made a choice, and I, I think it was for the better. You know, so we'll see how that progresses. What kind of services do you guys offer to veterans if they join the VFW, if they're having a hard time with maybe PTSD, maybe they need a service dog? I know you mentioned that. Yep, yes. we can work with someone to get them a service dog. Uh, we have a, uh, an in-post VSO with Jerry Maguire. We also have uh, the city VSO. Just be careful what you tell him. Yeah. Because everything you tell him, he's going to broadcast it. Well, then we have Paul Jensen, who just took over. Yep. And he's, good guy. he's doing very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, the Post can help you to an extent. Jerry can help you. Paul can help you either further or we'll direct you somewhere. We also have, if you need finances, we might be able to help you with something. Mm -hmm. It's not just, say, any veteran come off the street. We just had a veteran who was losing his apartment. Uh, and we would have loved to have helped him, but he refused to pay his uh, rent. Oh, that yeah. was on him. So right. I'm sorry we can't help you. Right. We can't do anything for you. But him. maybe if you're a veteran that's about to lose your house because, you know, for whatever reason, you're bad behind on your mortgage or something. There's this programs the VSO in the city can help you out with. Right. Uh, and you would have to go see Paul. Uh, he's up on that. I am not. But we're there to guide, help. If you're in, in, in uh, assisted living, we'll go visit. We have a member just went assisted living, and we uh, went and donated folding chairs so he had some place for somebody to sit mm -hmm. when they visit him. Uh, we can't help you unless we know about you. Right. And there are a lot of people that complain to say, well, you weren't there for me. Well, if we knew you were there looking, we would have been there for you. But a lot of times people don't know what the need is that people have, and if they don't tell someone, if they don't reach out and say, I yeah. need something, I need this or that, yeah. I'm having trouble, I'm having problems, you can't blame other people for not helping. Yep. You know, and yep. I get that all the time because we give scholarships and stuff at our bash, and someone will call me after the bash and go, "Hey, you know, I've been helping you every year for the last five years. How come you didn't give a scholarship to my kid? She's graduating this mm -hmm. year." And my answer is, "Why didn't you pick up the phone six months ago and tell me that?" 
Yeah. Like I, people think we know what this situation is, and we don't, right? Yeah. Unless they reach out. The problem and, is a lot yeah. of them, a lot, a lot of them are too proud to ask for right. help. Right. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And you know what? They shouldn't be because they served their country. If you're a veteran out there and you served your country, especially if you went off and you served in war, or you saw battle, you, you, there's nothing wrong with saying I need a little bit of help, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's yeah. no need to. You know, think that you have to swallow your pride to do that because there are people who are willing to help because you are willing to go out and serve yep. your country. Yep. Yeah. And there are people out you know, like Randy who wants to help, yep. right? So people, people who are veterans should not feel bad about reaching out for help on anything right. because there are people out here who want to help, who right. are looking to help. So, yeah. Yeah. And don't suck it up, you know? Right. I don't care what your drill instructor told you, whether you're a Marine, a soldier, Air Force, or Navy, a Coast mm-hmm. Guard, whatever your drill instructor told you, suck it up. <laughs> Bullshit. Right, that know? works in the battlefield. It doesn't work back at home. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Right. It doesn't. Did you have more stuff, Corinne, that you wanted to um, talk about? You looked like you had. Yeah, we, we, we actually do some things, too. We have the, a military assistant program, which helps uh, help. We donate money, and w- which helps the programs for, like, people, uh, veterans that don't, are homeless and that. And um, What do you do when a, when a veteran, a homeless veteran comes to you? Or they're about to be homeless, or they are homeless, and they say, "I need, I need a like, How does that work? What do you guys do? If for for auxiliary, yeah. I'd have them go to the post. Okay, yeah. and then we would in turn see if we could do something through our networking, or we would get in touch with Paul and say, "Paul, what can you do? Uh, how has he been to work with? It's been good. Okay, you know, he's new to it, but he's learning. He's uh, he's a hard charger." Uh, he's done an awful lot for the veterans. He's returning phone calls? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, I, what he did, a uh, couple things, is uh, we have a couple committees going for the uh, Memorial Day Parade, the Veterans Day Parade, and the Santa's Parade. Mm-hmm. And my big thing is I am uh, uh, totally disgusted uh, since I've been in Methuen. The Veterans Day Parades, Memorial Day Parades, uh, there are more people in the parade than watching the parade. Yeah, that's sad. Santa Claus shows up who, you know, mm-hmm. who he is. Right. Or she is. Right. At, uh, and you've got everybody in the world out there for that crap. Right. This year, we, uh, we let off the Methuen Day, uh, the Santa Parade. Yeah. Uh, they had the majority of us sitting in golf carts because a lot of them are old and our we hips are gone. Now, and we right? can't yeah. walk now. But, right. but we were in it and we're staying on that committee to try to build it up. And we're also, Paul's working with us with the two committee, three committees to get the Memorial Day Parade going, Veterans Day Parade going, and uh, we'll be inserted a little bit more in the Santa Parade. So with uh, it, people coming up says, thanks for your service, thanks for your service. Uh, I'm of the uh, frame of mind, where were you when I came home in uh, in 68? Right. You were spitting on me, throwing crap at me. Right. Uh, you name it. You know, calling, I, did, I didn't. Your baby killer. I didn't tell. I didn't tell anybody I was a Vietnam veteran until I got out of uh, art school. Really? Even you, I had other veterans in the school. You didn't talk about it. Right. You know, we were pretty bad. You know, I didn't kill a baby. Right. But, you know. Uh, yeah, it's disgusting when the Vietnam veterans have been have been treated. So when they history. come up and they say thanks for your service, I take it with a grain of salt. Right. Because the majority of them weren't even walking the face of the earth when I was right. over there. So I was one in 1968. So, yeah. <laughs> but I still want to thank you guys. Yeah, for I your saw service. you in a carriage. My brother, yeah. <laughs> my brother was in Vietnam. My father was in the World War II, the big red one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I joined the auxiliary because I wanted to be able to give to them. Right. They've given so much to us. Right. So I said, you know, it's going to be something that I can do. And then I found out about the VFW and the auxiliary, which I, you know, never really thought when I was younger about. And I am so blessed Mm -hmm. to be able to be part of that Mm -hmm. auxiliary. And and again, if we don't know who you are or what your needs are and uh, we can't help you and you do not have to be a member of the VFW to have a need that we can help you with. Well, that's good to know. So if you're a veteran, and even if you're not a a VFW member, but you you need help. You have a service dog, PTSD, food, clothing, you're about to be homeless, reach out. Reach out to the VFW. Cash card, a uh, Visa card or something like that. We've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. and We've helped out. We screen quite a bit because we've had people try to come through the door claiming to be something right. that they're not looking for money mm-hmm. and uh, you're not getting it. You're going to get one of the right. eight and a half up your uh, backside. So so now my grandfather was in World War II. He was in Corregidor. My father was a Vietnam era vet. He was on a, a uh, he was in the Navy so he didn't go to Vietnam but he was off the shores. Um, would I qualify if I wanted to be an auxiliary if I wanted to come and say hey I want to help out in some way in any way that I can or, or no? Do you have any of them that, that 
in your family lineage that uh, could have served in a combat zone? Uh, well, my grandfather, but he's passed away. That doesn't, matter. That's alive. That doesn't matter. Yeah, my grandfather was in Corregidor. My grandfather actually that, was no. on, the, on the Admiral Hughes that uh, liberated Corregidor. No. Brought, brought the guys that no. survived. That back. doesn't matter. You can come down and uh, uh, it used to be known years ago as the Ladies Auxiliary mm -hmm. because women weren't in combat uh, or they weren't recognized by the VFW. I'll join the Ladies Auxiliary. That's, I'm perfectly comfortable doing that's, that. That's changed. And I keep slipping up and calling the ladies. It's auxiliary now. And she changes it. Well, not the ladies anymore. We, we have men. And uh, we have Paul Jensen is a member okay. of our auxiliary. Right. Although, if you're listening, uh, we're waiting for you to show up and do something. Right. <laughs> do something. That's important. I'm glad that you said he returns calls because we get a lot of complaints because we do a lot at the Valley Patriot to help veterans. And people call us about stuff. And, um, and we get a lot of complaints about VSOs who don't return calls. No, he's in. And, 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 and I haven't had any on Paul, but I asked that question for that reason yeah. because... There are some other VSOs that we've had veterans call and say, I can't, get, can't even get this guy on the phone. Some of these men are buried. Tom Hargraves, who did a good job. Mm -hmm. I listened for quite a few years of people complaining they couldn't get help or this or that. Well, one, he did his job. Mm -hmm. So I went and checked everything out. He did his job. Uh, a lot of the veterans that complained come to find out they he could not help them because of their current financial mm -hmm. uh, they own property or they had a bank account right. or uh, didn't qualify for something, dishonorable discharge. You know, the man went to bat for everybody. He did. But you take those couple of people, and you know how word spreads. Right. One guy saying something bad is going to go a lot further than 10 guys saying this guy's great. Well, yeah, I wasn't talking necessarily about Paul, but, like, yeah. you know, all over the Merrimack Valley, you've got yeah. VSOs, and some of them don't. Oh, there are calls. some of them that don't. Don't, don't do anything. And and I, I would love to, I, but I'm not going to do it because I'm going to shame a veteran, but yeah. I would love to get them in a room and play for them some of the voice messages that we get from veterans who say, I called the VSO in such and such a town, mm -hmm. called them back three weeks later, sent them an email, tried to drop in and he wasn't in his office. All I need is my paperwork. Yeah. And then I'll try to call them and I have a hard time reaching them. Yeah. So I'm glad that was the reason I asked about Paul because... Yeah. He's new, right? And and we want to make sure that the guy that got that job is going to be responsive. It's going to be picking up the phone and is going to be answering people's oh, emails. When, when they hired him, when they were doing the search, uh, we wanted to have veterans in on that committee that may have pulled mm -hmm. together. And he had some veterans, but, you know, personal preference, they weren't the veterans that we might have wanted in right. there. Uh, and it came down to uh, Paul. We had a couple other veterans that went high on the list. I don't know... Don't know how it changed. You know, we sat and met it with It should the have been mayor. Randy Carter, quite frankly. It, we, should, have, it, it should changed have been with Randy. the mayor. Right. My frame of thought was we needed somebody that was an enlisted man. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul was a captain, but the guy's doing a great job, I think. Uh, anybody that would have taken that job is going to be buried. Right. I mean, there's just too much to it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they picked, uh, the committee picked him. He's in there and then. Uh, been doing, uh, you know, the best that he can. It's sad that it's political, but I think once they get the job, now now you're going to sink or swim. You're either going to be responsive or you're not, and I'm glad to hear that he is because there's a, quite a few. Yeah. Well, some, some towns it is friends of friends. Right. And I don't do friends of friends. Right. Period. Dave O'Neill and Corinne Yates from the Methuen VFW, if you'd like to make, how, do, how can people donate? How can people help out? They can uh, come down to the post. We're at 26 River Street. We're open Tuesday through Sunday from 12 to about 11 at night. Uh, Monday right now we are uh, closed till the spring for maintenance. We're redoing uh, the inside of the building, making repairs, updates, and everything else. So Monday is closed. Joyce is going to be very sad. No bean suppers for a while. <laughs> well, she's after us to get one of those. We have like, the next big thing is the St. Pat Patrick's Day party. Uh, then we have the uh, country western dances at least twice a month on nice. Saturday nights. Nice. And we'll be setting something up at least once a month, uh, free veterans breakfasts, coffee days. Nice. It's just snowballing and getting it going. So. Fantastic. Uh, Dave O'Neill, Dan o Dave, Dave O'Neill, Dave O'Neill and uh, Corinne Yates, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I want to thank, uh, you can roll up, Mel. I want to thank our sponsors, McLennan Real Estate, uh, Century 21 on Broadway in Methuen, AFC Urgent Care in Methuen in North Andover, Marsan and Son Construction. By the way, Ronnie Marsan pays for breakfast for veterans yep. every year yep. at the uh, Country Kitchen. Great guy. EIS, Investigation and Gun Training. Borelli's Deli, where you can get the best hot sausages anywhere in the Merrimack Valley. Tomo and Happy Crab right down here on uh, Broadway in Salem, New Hampshire. 
Clear Path for Veterans New England. A free shout out to Sullivan Insurance and our newest advertiser, a guy I'm going to be visiting next week, Lazy River Products in Drakeit. Lazy River Products for cannabis. So if you're looking for medical marijuana, you got some problems, your doctor says you need it, Lazy River Products in Drakeit is the place to go. I want to thank Chrissy, my fine, fine producer, who's here every single week helping us get this broadcast going. And of course, my good friend, and I say that and I mean it, he's my good friend, Randy Carter who's always there for the veterans, and especially the homeless veterans. Melvin Taylor sounds like he says we got to go home. Did he say that? We got to go home? He's telling you to go home, so go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.